Hello everybody, Jim Dandy here from Jim Dandy Forex and LearnMQL4.com where you can learn how to program your own trading strategies uh, for your Forex trading. I also have a Facebook page at Facebook.com slash LearnMQL4 and a Twitter account now at Twitter.com forward slash Jim Dandy underscore 1958. Jim Dandy underscore 1958 is my uh, Twitter handle. I'm making a video today to show us how to put a button on the chart. How do we put a button on the chart and then when we push the button something happens? I'm getting a lot of questions about this. People want to know how to put a button on the chart. So we're going to make a button and we're going to make that button so that we, when we push it, it's going to enter a trade, either a buy or a sell depending on which button we push. Now I'm making this a video, first of all, for my Patreon patrons. They're going to get to see this video ahead of you guys because out of my over 32, 3300 YouTube subscribers, there's only 21 people who have said that it's worth chipping in a dollar to get one of my tutorial videos. I only charge for a tutorial video, not just news and, and uh, Forex Factory calendar stuff and like that. But when I'm teaching something, I'll, I'll let these guys chip in a buck. So if you want to join them, and be the early bird like them and get to see the videos before everybody else on YouTube, then become a Patreon patron at patreon.com forward slash Jim Dandy 1958. So without further ado, let's learn how to put a button on the chart. Okay, I know what you're saying. You're saying, Jim, we don't need a button to put on the chart to to enter a trade, we already got a button we can push on the chart to enter a trade. We can already go right up here and drop this down. And if we want to go short, all we got to do is just hit the button and sell. It's just that simple. Why do we need a button? And we can set right here what size lot size we want. But as you see, we entered a trade, but there's no stop loss, no take profit set. What if we could make us a button and one button enters this with a 0.01 lot and one button enters this with a point. 10 lot and maybe one button has a 25 stop loss and a 50 take profit and another one has a 100 pip a stop loss and a 200 pip take profit make customizable buttons and just hit the one that you want to hit get in the direction you want to get use the lot size that you want to use with the stop loss and take profit that you want to use instantly with a touch of a button that's what we're going to do but first of all, before we do that, let me show you what you do have available to you. Let me close this trade before I forget I opened it. Um, let me get rid of that. If you will go into your meta editor, and let's bring down the um, MQL4 reference, and go in here and just start typing in OBJ, and you'll see right here, object to button, right? and click on that and you'll see all of this come up scroll down here to object button right here and you'll see this page come up that has some code in it for a script that they have written the following script creates and moves button object on the chart special functions have been developed to create and change graphical objects properties you can use these functions as is in your own application. So here's some free code that you guys can copy straight from MetaQuotes. And you see down through here, this is the top. Now this is a script. This is not an indicator. This is not an EA, but it is a script. And remember scripts will place trades for you. Uh, it starts off, it's got all these inputs here that the user puts in when he drops the script on the chart. and you see it says show inputs. That means normally, you know, when you drop a script on the chart, it just does what it does. It is, there is no place to enter any parameters. Well, with the show inputs, it stops and waits on you to enter some parameters. And then it has the functions in here, the button create function, to which all of these parameters have to be sent when you call the button create function. And then it takes all of those parameters and makes your button for you. Has a a button move function in it to move the button around on the chart. You can look at all this code and figure out what they're doing with the X and the Y coordinates and all of those things. It has a button change size. 
So you can look and see how they're taking the width and the height and uh, doing a little math on it and making it get smaller. Button change corner, button text change, button delete. And then finally down here is the on start function, the actual uh, function that runs when you drop the script on the chart finally. And you can see right here where they're calling that button create function and look at all of those parameters there's passing along with it. So let's just, uh, I'm just gonna, I clicked right there, I'm gonna push control A and just select that whole page and push control C and copy it into my clipboard. So let's just close that down and let's go over here and let's make us a new script. And we'll call it, um, I'll just call it button code, okay? Button code. So here we have a script. Of course, we don't want any of this necessarily. So I'm gonna push Control A to select all of it and then Control V and copy everything that's in my clipboard right here. Now to get back to the top of the th chart, or the um, file, you push Control Home. It takes you to the top. Now let's delete all that other stuff that was on that page that we don't want. There we go. Now we have got what was over there in that MQL4 reference. We've got the whole thing right here. Let's see if it compiles. And yes, it does. Now what does it do? What does it do? Let's go over to our uh, platform here. And let's look for it. And what did I name it? button code that's what I named it wasn't it so let's see what happens now notice when you drop it on the chart this thing comes up where you can put in all kinds of parameters uh, to do things I'll let you play with that give you something to play with here we're gonna say okay and let's watch what it does it starts out with a giant button to get smaller and smaller and smaller and disappears so that's what that code does. So now you can go and play with it and see how what you can change in it to make it act differently. So that should give you something to play with while I get set up over here to show you how to make a button to do what we want it to do. Okay, so where do we start? Well, let's look at the code we just put in here. Let's look at this button create function and see what really makes the button. I mean, they're passing all kinds of parameters into it to use during the creation of that button. But notice the actual creation of the button is done with the object create function. And this little bit of code right here actually initially makes the button. And then all of the stuff below it sets parameters on that button, makes it a certain color, makes it display a certain text, makes it a certain size, a certain place on the chart, on a certain corner, all of those things are down below, you see through here, and all of this stuff that got sent along when the function was called. But let's just start with the basics. Let's start right here, and let's just steal this little bit of code right here, Control C, and uh, let's make this a new script, a uh, new script, and we'll just call it our button. Our button. Okay. So here's our button. And let's just paste that code in right here. Control V. Object create. Now the chart ID, if we're going to create it on the chart uh, that we dropped it on, it's going to be zero. This is one of the parameters that got passed. Uh, the name of the button, uh, we'll call it, and this is a string, uh, our button. Now that's the actual name of the object on the chart. When we get ready to delete this button, we've got to delete the our button, the, the object named our button. So it's creating an object. The sub window, we're going to put set, set that to zero for right now. And we're just going to leave it at that. Don't want to forget our semicolon at the end. There, it looks like we haven't done anything, does it? Oh, but we have. Let's compile that. Let me push F4, go over to our platform. And let's look for our button in our list of scripts, and there it is. And when we click it, lo and behold, we get a button on the chart. And we can push it in everything. You can change time frames. It's not going anywhere. That button is there. Now you may wonder, so you can't grab it and move it and do anything to it. You may wonder, well, how 
how do you delete it? You can even go into your objects list here, which you can also just push control B and do this. And when it comes up, this is all you see on the chart. Three horizontal lines, uh, trend lines, some arrows. Where's our buttons at? What you probably need to do is push list all. Because you see down here in this uh, control panel, there's all kinds of buttons. They're not in this list. List all. Now we see all the buttons and now we see our button in the list there. And you can just check that and delete it if you want to. Or you can just push backspace too. Let me close this. If we push backspace, it starts deleting things. The last thing that was drawn on the chart will be the first thing to go. See all the buttons disappearing? I'm just pushing the backspace key on my chart. Eventually it gets to it. Now if I just if I just push the our button again, put it on if I just push the backspace, it goes away. So anyway, that's how we put the button on the chart. Now let's say, okay, Jim, I don't want it on this chart. I want it, let's say we've got some more. Let's open us some more indicators down here. Let's open us a stochastic. Uh, let's open us some MACD. Okay, let me get rid of this. Let's say we don't want the button up here on this chart. We want the button down here on the stochastic. What you need to change, let me push F4, go back over here. We want, instead of putting it in sub window zero, we want to put it in sub, zero, sub window one. F7 to compile, F4 back over here. Now let's drop our button on the chart. I think I'll just leave this open up here. Our button. Now it shows up down here. If we set that to 2, F7, F4, set it to 2 and hit it, it won't do anything. Why won't it do anything? Because we can't have two objects that have the same name. We cannot put our button on the chart again until we get rid of the one that's already on there that has that name. So let me push the backspace and get rid of it. Now when I push it, it comes up down there. You cannot have two objects with the same name. If one's already on the chart, you're not going to get it to load another one. So keep that in mind when you're playing around with this. So there you see how to put the button on whichever window you want to put it on. For our part, we pretty much just want to put it on the main window. Okay, we got rid of all of that. So now we know how to make a button, first of all. And how to put it on the chart. Now, you notice on the chart, we didn't tell it to put it in the upper left corner. We didn't tell it to write button on our button. That's just some default values in the program. Uh, we named it our button and you can't mouse over it and see that it's our button. Now, if you wanted to delete this button with, a, with another script, you would just simply write a script that says object delete our button and it will basically do the same thing as going in here and deleting that button just like that okay so we've established how to make a button and how to put it on whatever window we want to put it on zero is the main window they call it a sub window but it's the main window and then as the windows go down, you go one, two, and so on and so forth. You saw how it worked. All right, let's move on. Okay, now that I've got you this far, uh, let's go and steal some more code out of that file. Over here. Uh, let's see here. In the button create, now we just took this right here. But let's just take this. I like the idea of checking to make sure that our button got created. You notice it says there... If it did not create this button, then it's supposed to print into the ledger that it failed to create the button. That's a good idea. A little error checking never hurt anybody. So let's go down here and let's also steal all of these other things down through here that they use to make the button like they want it. All the parameters for the button, like so. Let's go over here. And I'm just going to put this, got to stay in this bracket here. Let me put this right here first of all. Let me scroll up here. And we're going to take this. Let's just put zero in here. 
and our button and we'll just put zero well no I'll just um, yeah I'll leave that at zero so now we don't need this line anymore now if it doesn't create our button it's going to print that it failed to create it and it's going to print the error of why it didn't create it now we have all of these properties down here once we've created the button then we've got all of these properties we can add to it now right now you see all the way down there it says chart ID and name so all of those chart IDs need to zero for what need to be zero for what we're going to do however rather than change all of those to zero let's go up here at the top and just click declare an integer call chart ID and say it equals zero now we don't have to change all of those and rather than change all of those names let's declare a string up here name equals our button there we saved all of that typing or all of that changing anyway that takes care of all the chart ID and all of the name now we come to the X distance the Y distance so look at what some of these things are now the object property X distance and it's going to be the property of the our button object X distance is how far to the left or the right uh, from the chart it is the Y distance is how far vertically from the top of the chart or the bottom of the chart depending on which corner of the chart we have the button anchored to which we'll get to that in a minute how big is our button the X size of our button is how wide is our button and the Y size is how tall is our button right here and you see all these parameters X Y height width over here in this function call they sent all of those parameters well actually they set them up in here didn't they but anyway we're just going to set it to something that we can hard code in our simple little explanation so let's just set them to 50 and 50 the height of our button I don't know how big a button do you want let's make it a square button that's the size of our button there uh, what corner we will just start off with zero now here's where we actually get to put the tech you know right now it says button on our button this is where we actually get to put some text on the button so let's just put by on here like so the font I don't know I'm not real big on what font does what so I'll just put Arial or something font size 12 I don't know we'll look at it in a minute the object property color let's make it um, I don't know what's a buy button let's make it green background color um, black border color um, gray display in the foreground false or background true we wanted to uh, display in the foreground so you set it to false here we're asking if we want it to display in the background or not and we say no we do not we want it to be on the foreground we don't want the if our buttons on the chart and we got candles we don't want the candles on top of the button we want the button on top of the candles object property state do we want the button to be pushed or unpushed you see up here they've got false so it's unpushed when it creates the button the button has not been pushed yet or pressed however you want to say it
Now, do you want to be able to move the button or not? Hmm. Let's see how they have it set up here. They have it false, that you can't move the button. And we'll start out with it set on false. We'll try to move it, and then we'll come back and change this. Now, this object property selected here, you know when you select something, before you get ready to move it, it'll highlight it. This is uh, going to determine whether it is highlighted or not when it makes the button. And no, it is not. Hide true or display false the graphical object name in the object list. Hmm. Let's set that to true. See if that hides the button from us in the list. Object set integer the Z order. Now the Z order, we know X and Y on a chart is left and right and up and down, but Z order is how the objects on your chart are stacked. Are the candles on top of the button? If you've got more than one button, if you've got a button and a label and a blah blah blah, if you've got several objects on your chart and they get on top of each other and you click on the pile, do you want your button to get the click? Is it on top of the pile? That's what this is. And the answer is yes. We want this set to zero so that if there's something on top of the button and we happen to click, let's say we click on a candle or something that's right on top of the button, it doesn't make any difference. As far as this is concerned, the button's on top and the button gets the click. Now, due to the fact that I've been making all of these changes over here in the file that I didn't want to make the changes to, I'll show you how uh, you get out of this problem. Let me go in here and grab all of this and copy it into the clipboard. Let's go over to the other one. Let me grab all of this, paste it in here, control V. Now I just moved all of that over here, what I did. Now let me go back over here, push control Z, and undo all of this stuff. Whoops, I didn't want to control Z that much. Okay, there we go. Now, how far are we from having this to compile? Our button undeclared identifier. I don't have it in quotation marks. But really, I could just put name in here, couldn't I? Let me do that. Return void function returns a value. Now what this means is that I have put this in a void. It wasn't in a void type function over here in this file. You see, it's in a bool type function. So since it's in a void function, all it just needs to say is return. Like that. There we go. So let that be a lesson to you. Okay, so what in the world does our button look like now? Let's take a look. F4, let's go over here. Let's make our button on the chart. There we've got a big black button that says buy on it, and it is green and it is in the upper left corner, which is corner zero. If we were to go back over there and change the corner to corner one, and then of course we have to take it off of the chart before we can put it on again. And you see, it's over here now, but you notice it's running off the chart. So what's up with that? I want you to notice that the top left corner of the button is exactly the right distance from the corner. That's the problem. This button is being drawn based on the top how far the lot how far the top left corner is from the corner of the chart. Our X coordinates, remember we got 50 pixels X and 50 pixels Y, that's where that left corner is of this button. Let's change it to the bottom. If When we change this to the bottom left corner, I'll show you. Down there, I'm backspacing deleted off of here. Now the problem is Again, the top left corner is 50 pixels away each direction. 
and you can imagine what happens. Uh, let me go ahead and backspace that off of here. You can imagine what happens if we set it to three, put it on the chart. Now it's going to end up over here in the uh, in the bottom left corner. So let's see here. Let me put it back in the in the top left corner. Putting it in the top left corner makes things a much simpler. There we go. Now, we've got a button, and it is a buy button. Now, if we want to move it to a different corner on the chart, what we would have to do is put code in there that goes and gets information about which corner of the chart you have it set on. And if it is not in this top left corner, then you're going to have to make adjustments. In other words, we know that over here, that top left corner is 50 pips each way. If we stick it over in the other corner, and we know our box, our button is 200 pixels, because that's what we set it on, 200, I think I'm telling you right. Yes, we set it 200 pixels wide. It's kind of large, isn't it? Let's make it a little smaller. Um, There we go. So now we know it's 50 pips. If we move that button over into this top right corner, then we have to make our X and Y values change. We have to have the top left corner of that button 150 pips from the on the X axis. It's the right distance from the top of the chart. You see, if we come over here and we put it on And you can also put corner left upper. This is an enumeration, and this is the same as putting a one here, but this is a lot easier to understand, isn't it? You can put corner left upper. Oh, that's the same as zero, I'm sorry. You put corner left upper. You can put corner right upper. That's the same as one. But as I said, if we move it over into this corner, we are going to have to set the x-axis do the fact that we know that our button is 100 pips wide and we want this 50 pips out so let me show you what we've got here let's get that off of here let's drop it on the chart again and see now it works so you would have to put code in in your EA or whatever you're putting this in so that whenever someone changes corners it also says it has an if statement that says something like if corner equals zero x and y equals zero if corner equals one x and y equals so and so and such and such you get the idea here so just keep that in mind so now we've made us a buy button let's make us a sell button too okay so I grabbed me some trail mix and made me some coffee and I'm all charged up again ready to go on <clears throat> I've been playing around with this thing a little bit uh, since that last segment because I was wondering about here where it says the property hidden was true and it said it would hide it in the list so I wanted to see what that meant and I'm still not exactly clear on what the selectable and selected and stuff was but I know now I'll show you what all this means first of all uh, the object property hidden. Uh, let's go back over there and uh, let me make sure I've got a current one on the chart <clears throat> right here. Now, if we look in our our list, you see there's nothing on this list except that uh, little Jim Dandy spread indicator back there. You don't see that button unless you hit the list all button, and that's what it means. If if I have it, if I leave it like this and I go back in there, let me get this off the chart. If I set that hidden property to false, then I don't have to, uh, whoops. Now when I put it on the chart, like so, if I look in the, in the uh, list now, you see it shows up. I don't have to push the list all button. So that's what that property uh, really means. Now, for the 
um, selectable button. One, another thing I notice is when I've got it this color, I can't tell when I have the button pushed or not. When it's black, let's go back over there and change that. And it's, let's turn it around. Let's make the button gray and the border black, like this. Okay, now, now we can tell when we push the button because it changes colors. Now, as far as the selectable and the selected and all that goes, um, whenever we put an object on the chart, let's say uh, we put a rectangle on the chart, right? When we get that on the chart, if we want to delete it or move it or do anything to it, we have to double click it and, and select it before we can move it around. That is a selectable object. Now, if we want to be able to do that to our button, uh, which we don't, but if we did want to do this, of course now all I gotta do is hit delete and it will disappear. Now let me go into the code here, down here where it says selectable. Let's change this to true. Okay. We put it on the chart. We can actually double click it now and move it around. We can move it around and, and if it is selected like that, I can hit the delete key and delete it. And if I go over there and I set selected to true, as soon as it is created, F7, F4, as soon as it is created, it is already selected. So that's what those settings do. Now, obviously it doesn't work like a normal looking button anymore. If it's selectable, when you push the button, it doesn't change colors. So, which now you're still, the, the, it still knows that you're pushing this button uh, just because it's not changing colors if you had that button set to do something when you clicked on it it would do it right now so anyway I wanted to clarify what those two things was and there was one more thing oh yes you remember our uh, code over here where I put in to that if it failed to create the object to send out an error code and tell us why we didn't get our button made. Well, let's go over there and check and see if that's working. Now, we've got one on the chart. Let's try to make another one. And you see down here, on start failed to create the button error code equals 4200. Well, what is error code 4200? Let's go over here and look and see what error code 4200 is. Let's just click on something here. F1. Let's type 4200 in here. Like so. Scroll down here to it, and you can see that 4200 is object already exists. And that's what the problem was, wasn't it? So now, you should know about everything there is to know about things to set on a button. The X, the Y, the size, the font, the name it, the color, the background, the border, whether it's selectable or not. We set all these back to false. Now I think we're back where we want to be, but I wanted to cover that before we got away from it uh, because all of that selectable and selection and all that stuff, I wasn't really sure if it did what I thought it did, but now we know. Now we know. Okay, so we've come to the point where <clears throat> you can only do so much in a script. We're doing all this in a script and we can't really move it to an indicator because we want what we want our button to do is to place a trade. You can place a trade in a script, but a script just runs and is gone like that. You can't put a button on the chart <clears throat> that you're going to press later and use. The script is gone. That would run what that button's supposed to do. An indicator would leave the button on the chart and tell you that you're clicking it, but an indicator cannot place a trade. So what we have to do <clears throat> is move our code into an expert advisor now while it's as small as it is and then we'll add the sell button when we get it over into the expert advisor okay so first of all let's make us an expert advisor to move our code over into so let's make us a new expert advisor and we'll call it the button trader Like so, and we do want an on chart event in it. 
because that's what's going to pick up the fact that we have uh, clicked on the button on the chart. <clears throat> Boy, I'm getting hoarse. So we'll say next and next. Okay, here we go. Now we have the skeleton of our button trader. Now let's go over and get our code. Now, there's so many different ways to do this. Our code right now is not really that big, but we're about to double it by making it also make a sell button. Now obviously, we don't want it making a button on every tick, so we don't want to put this into the on tick function. Normally we would put this on the on init function, and then when the expert starts, it will make the buttons, and it won't have to do it again. However, that's going to make for a huge on init function, so probably what we should do is do like they did and make us a button create function and put our code in it and then just from the on init function call the button create function. So let's just go right here in our on init function right now let's just say button create. That's what's going to happen in the on init function. And let's go over and get our code out of our our button and we'll just take that whole function in fact I'm just going to take all of this There we go. Let's go over here and let's put this in our button trader EA down below everything, down in here somewhere. There it is. Okay, now, obviously we don't want a void on start function here. So this is now going to become the button create function. Whoops, capital B. I think that's the way I spelled it. Button create. There we have it down there. And what I want to do is just go ahead and move these two variables right into the function. There we go. So that's that's in the button create function. Now, let's see what we run into when we try to compile it. it says everything is okay. Uh, let's see what happens when we drop it on a chart. So now we're into the expert advisor business now. <clears throat> we're out of the script business. So here's our button trader. I think I'll just add that to my favorites. Now once you add something to your favorites, you can dra you can move it in this list. You can move it right up to the top. And then we'll just uh, squish this up to where all we have to look at is this thing. Okay, so there's our button trader. Let me get that button off the chart right there. So let's drop the button trader EA. We got auto trading turned on, which is required for an expert advisor to run. So we drop this on the chart, and it really doesn't have anything in it. But we can see that it did run our button create function, and we have what we had before, except now we're running it out of an EA. So now let's make our sell button. So what we're going to do is we're going to, now there's a couple of ways we could do this. We could use the same code twice. We could we could call the button create function and send it the name of the button we want to create and all of that stuff and have it run the same code with different parameters. But let's just keep it simple here. In other words, I could say uh, if I, if I uh, had this thing set up to where in, instead of having no parameters it received like the color of the uh, text and the name of the button and all that kind of things and then it just runs the code and inserts it. But let's not do that. Let's just make another set of this right here. In fact Let's copy all of this and I'll copy it and paste it in again. There we go. So now I've got it in here twice. Let me separate it. Good, I'm glad to give me another drink. Okay, now what is the difference between these two buttons? We have a name up here called our button. So let's change this to um, buy button. 
since this one is creating our buy button, this first one, I'll leave everything else the same. Then let's go down to the second button we're creating it. We'll just call it name two. And we'll call it the sell button. And now that means that all the places down through here where it says name, we would really like to swap that out for name two. Well, let me show you how to do that. First of all, I'm going to select name right here. I'm going to push, push control H. You notice it has name up here at the top and it just so happens it has name too in here already. But th what it's going to do is it's going to find the occurrences of name and replace it with name two every place that I tell it to do it. So you can see, um, let me start right here. Let it find the next one, which is right there. Replace it. Replace it, replace it, replace it. I just keep hitting replace. I don't want to replace that one, so I find the next one. Replace, replace, and now we've jumped back up to the buy button, so I'm done. Now all of the buy button is name, and all of the sell button is name too. But that replace, that control H, don't forget that. That will save you a lot of typing. Control H, and you saw how I used it there. So now it's going to create a cell button. Now what's going to be different about our cell button? Well, we know um, the other button has its X distance at a 150. And so, and it's 100 pips wide, I mean 100, uh, pixels wide so we want our cell button to be the left of it so we're going to set it on the chart at 250 so we'll have the cell button top left corner at 250 the buy button top left corner at 150 <clears throat> so that moves it over on the chart makes them display side by side uh, of course we want to change the text on it to say cell right here and uh, I think we need to make our font a little bigger. We'll look at that in a minute. And uh, <laughs> color, since it's a cell, we'll change it to red. Oops. We'll leave that part the same there. Um, anything else that we need to do? I guess that's it. Now, have I got anything messed up? Well, amazingly enough, it compiles. So let's go over and look, and you can see, due to the fact that when I hit the compile button, the EA recompiled, and when it did, it drew my buttons for me already. And now we have a sell button and a buy button. And I do believe we need bigger font, right? Oh, you know what? I've got to, uh, you see the error down there that it failed to create a button? Um, it tried to make the buttons and one was already on the chart, so it got an error code on one of them. So, uh, when this thing reinitializes, what we need for it to do, we need to put in the onDinit function, we need to put an object delete and we're going to put the buy button and we're going to put one for the sell button hmm I must not have it spelled right oh yes I do I just don't have them in quotation marks dummy there we go compile that now and let's go in there, let's go back in our code and let's change each one so that we know uh, fail to create the buy button and fail to create the sell button. Compile that. Let's see what we got over here now. Um, all right, we're good. We don't have anything we're failing to create now. Because when it reinitializes, it deletes the old buttons off of the chart and then makes new ones. Okay.
We're good to go on that. Now to make that font a little bit bigger, can we do that? Let's see here. Let's see if this makes a difference. 16. Yes. In fact, I should you know what I'll do. I'll go back over here. I'll pull this down a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Let's set that to 24 and hit compile. Buy. Let's set it to 28. Compile. That looks pretty good. Let's go down here and let's change the other one to 28. Okay. Now we can see that. Sell buttons and buy buttons. Now, what do we want it to do when we hit it? We want it to place the trade, don't we? So, now that we've got it in an expert advisor, we can do just that. Next, we're going to get into the on chart event function, and you'll see how easy it really is to go in here and make something happen when you click a button. That's next. Okay, the on chart event is a newer event handling function that we got when they made the big change to uh, MetaTrader uh, last year. An event handling function is a function like the uh, on start function that runs whenever you drop the script on a chart. The uh, on the init function, which runs whenever you first drop something on the chart, whether it be an indicator or an expert advisor. Uh, the on tick function on an expert advisor on each tick when a tick comes in that event happens the function runs and the on chart event is an, an event that an event handling function that gets triggered whenever something happens on the chart now there are different things that can set it off let me bring up the uh, MQL4 reference here you can see there can be a just a key down on your keyboard can make it uh, trigger an event, something that you want to happen. Um, just simply moving your mouse can cause something to happen. Create an object, change an object, delete an object, click. Um, this is just clicking on the chart, not necessarily on any particular object. Um, and the one that we're interested in is chart event object click. Now, you can drag an object. Uh, if you're editing something, when you finish editing, like you're changing the text in a label or something, when that happens, you can make a specific thing happen in the on chart event, whatever you program it to do. So anyway, that's the general idea. Now, what I, we want to pay attention to is you notice that, let me move this over a little bit, in the on chart event, when it gets triggered by one of these events, it has these four parameters sent to it. Now the very first one you see there, the ID, identifies what event happened. So in other words, ours would be a chart event object click. That would be the event that we're looking for. Not interested when someone clicks the chart, only when someone clicks our object. The next a parameter you see there is an L param, and that stands for a long number. The next one is a D param, which is a double and the last one there is S param, which is a string. Now, when someone clicks on a chart, and we can scroll down here and look, um, <clears throat> you see across the top, the top here, it's telling you what each event triggers, what parameters are sent. So down here on event of a mouse click in a graphical object belonging to the chart, scroll that back up a little bit, you can see the ID parameter is going to hold chart event object click. The X and the Y coordinates are what's going to be contained in the L param and the D param. And the name of the object that got clicked, whether it was the buy button or the sell button, is what's going to be in the S param. So all we really want to know is if a chart event just happened and if the identification, the ID of that event was chart event object click, then we want to know 
if it was on the buy button or the sell button. If the S param that came in with that click was buy button, we want to do a certain thing. If the S parameter that came in, the string parameter came in, was the sell button, we want to sell. So that's basically the concept of what we've got to do here. So let me get this down out of the way. What we're going to say, get rid of that little thing. First of all, we're looking for an event of the chart. Let's see here. If ID equals chart event object click right there. If it's an object click and let's say the S param is equal to buy button. like that okay so there is our criteria for taking a buy so let's uh that's the first one well i've got that there so nice and convenient let me copy and paste it again and just put cell parameter in here i mean cell button in here let's put a little space in here between it okay so uh first of all just to see if it's working. Let's just print something into the ledger. Let's have it print. Uh, you just pressed the buy button or you just pressed the sell button. There. So let's see what I'm forgetting, if anything. Looks pretty good. But you see what's happening here. When we click on one of those buttons and it triggers the on chart event and it trigger, triggers that a chart event object click happened. And it, when it happened, it looks to see which string was sent, buy button or sell button, Whichever one it was, it's going to do whichever thing we have it set to do. So let's go over here now. We can see we, our buttons are up here. Let's see what happens when we click the cell button. You see down here, you just pressed the cell button. You just pressed the buy button. It's just that simple. You just go into the on chart event function. And all we have to put here now, in place of printing this, is to send an order. Now, rather than put all that here in the onChartEvent function, let's just make us a little order sending function. In fact, I've probably got some a one in another file around here somewhere. Just a little order sending function that we can call on the event, and we'll send along whether we want it to buy or to sell. So let me back that space this out of here and let's just say, uh, we'll just say place order. And we're going to send along op buy. Now we don't have a place order function yet, but we'll make one here in a second. And of course this is going to be op sell. We push control comma to get everything to line up. All right, so whenever you press either one of these buttons, we're going to call a function that we don't have yet. So let's set up our function next. Okay, I got me some hot coffee. <clears throat> Maybe that'll help my voice come back a little bit. Of course, it is uh, 4.15 in the morning. That may have something to do with it, too. You can see that if I try to compile, it tells us that the place order function is not defined. So let's make us a place order function. And this is just going to be a void type function. Place order, and you remember, we're going to send um, along... 
Let me get my brackets in here before I forget it. We're going to send along whether it's a buy or a sell trade. So that's an integer. Uh, buy is zero, sell is one. Um, so we're going to call it dir for direction. <clears throat> it's expecting to be sent a parameter when you call it. So if the parameter that it is sent is op buy, and then we're going to do one thing and so on and so forth. So let's say if dir equals op by like so, we're going to do one set of things. And if it equals op sell, we're going to do something else. Okay. Now we got rid of those errors anyway. We no longer have an empty function. Now what do we want it to do? We want it to send an order and then modify the order, right? So if the direction is op by, we're going to do an order send function. And in here we have the parameters of the symbol. You see the next is the command, and which means we want to buy or sell and we're just going to put dir in here next the volume what size lot size do we want to trade of course we can put external variables you know for the user to set but let's just let's just get this done so let's send a 0.01 trade the next thing this is a buy so we're going to buy at the ask price the slippage we'll put in 30 here 30 points uh, the stop loss we'll put a zero and the take profit will put a zero. We're not. We'll set this. We'll set those parameters after we get the order placed. Um, the comment. Nah. We'll just leave it alone for now. We'll just put null here. Magic. We'll just put zero. Of course, there's no expiration time. We'll just put a placeholder of zero. And the color arrow. We'll make it. Um, see, was this a buy? We'll make it green. Okay, so let's do the same thing for a sell order. Well, first of all, let me say integer ticket equals. So is that if that is successful, it is going to return the ticket number and we are going to capture it. Only difference here, of course, is that we are wanting, well, no, really, the only difference is that this is going to be at the bid. Since we use the direction variable, this will be op buy and this will be op sell. Semicolon expected. Oh, I've got all kinds of errors here. That doesn't need to be a double. Let's work our way through these. Oh, what did that have to do with a semicolon expected? So right now our button should work. It should place an order. It's not going to put in a stop loss and take profit, but it should place an order. Let's see if it'll do it. So here we are. Let's look at our little trade window here. We've got it on the chart. We hit the sell button and it places a 0.01 sell order. How about that? No stop loss, no take profit, but we do have a sell order placed. Let me delete that one and uh, let me place a buy order there we go we're placing orders with a button on the chart just that easy uh, now let's put a little order modify in there and, and put our stop loss and take profit in let me close this before I forget it so now that we've captured the ticket number now we're going to modify the order by that ticket number so we're going to say order modify and ticket is going to hold the number of the order that we want to modify. We want to put in here, you see it says the price, we're going to put the order open price, which means uh, whatever the order open price is of, a, of the order that has this ticket number. Now what stop loss do we want to put in here? Now remember the stop loss isn't a number of pips, a stop loss is a price. So let's say we want to use a 
20 pip stop loss. Well, we got in at the asking price, right? And we're, we're talking about a buy right now. So our stop loss will be the ask minus, let's say, 20 pips. Now the take profit, we're going to put in a 40 pip take profit. So it's going to be the ask plus, of course, you can put these in up above uh, in the settings. Of course, we haven't done anything in our on and it about adjusting for the uh, the number of digits this broker has or anything, but that's all in other videos. Right now, we're interested in making buttons trade for us, right? No expiration time, and once again, we'll make it green. Now, it's telling us down there that the return value of our order modify should be checked. So what we're going to say is if because order modified re returns a true or false. Let me show you here. Order send returns a ticket number when it's successful. Order modify, if you bring this up, you see it's a bool. And if it fails, it will send back false. It did not modify the order. So what we're asking it is if order modify, if it attempts to modify this order and it comes back false, if not order modify, then we'll have it print something in the ledger something like that and see now we got rid of the warning okay so down below let's do the modification for it let's just copy this make it short and sweet since I'm running out of vocal cords here it seems if we don't modern motor okay in this case we're going to our stop loss this is a sell so our stop loss is going to be the bid plus 40 and we'll make this red probably could just leave the initial order placement as color none couldn't I okay and down here we're just going to say we're unable to modify the sell order things don't all go well all right so let's go over and check it out let's see how it works place a sell order as you can see it placed a sell order and it placed the stop loss and the take profit just like it was supposed to it got in at 11.55.9 this is a sell and so the take profit was 11.15 40 pips below and the stop loss is 11.75 so that's working properly. Now the buy side places an order at 11.57 with a stop loss at 37, 20 pips below, and a 97 take profit. So 40 pips above. So that's working just like it's supposed to. So there you go, guys. Now, of course, you can go in this file and you can put uh, all kinds of settings, external variables, um, you know whatever size you want uh, to place a trade you can set your EA up um, for the size right here well I can do that real quick right now let me just put lot size right here and then up at the top we'll make an external variable like so I think you get the idea you can put all kinds of things in here um, your stop loss and your take profit Let's see if it works now. Let's uh, close these two. And uh, let's go in our EA here and let's set it to use some different uh, lot size. Let's, let's place a uh, 0 0.03. 0 0.03. Okay. So now when we hit the button, it should place an 03, right? There you go. Let's see, it's placing an 03 now. Stop loss and take profit settings. You can put those in there. Of course, you can look at my other videos about how to set up what a pip is. You know, you put in your on init function if digits equals three or digits equals five, so on and so forth. I'll let you find out how to do all of that. But now you know how to make a button. You know how to make it do what you want to do. 
all of the parameters associated with the button. And of course, now that you know how to make a buy button and a sell button, you can make a button that closes the trades. Uh, you can make a button that does all kinds of things. There's, you can make a button that places pending orders. You can make a button, you know, it's up to you. It'll change. You can make a button that'll change the chart color. Uh, that will change the time frame. You know, it's just like my Jim Dandy control panel. It's got all those buttons across the bottom of it. Let me close this out and change to the default. You see down here, all this, all these buttons do is change the time frame because there is an on-chart event in there for when I click that button. So it's it's your baby now, guys. So have fun with it. Um, I hope you can use it in your trading and uh, maybe even make a little money with it, coding it for somebody else. Anyway, it is 4.35 in the morning and for some reason, coffee does not keep me awake. I'm going to finish my coffee and go to sleep. Pip-pip. Okay, for my Patreon patrons and uh, people subscribe to my course, this part of the video won't be on YouTube. You go to my website, to the course website, learnmql4.com, go to the little search icon up in the corner. I'm going to make it so that if you type in button trader here, it'll take you to the page where you can download the file that I just wrote. But the normal YouTube viewers, they won't see this part of the video.